3.1, quadratic functions and models. When we think about quadratics, we should be thinking about parabolas. Okay, so remember, it's going to be a parabola. Um, you've got a vertex and, and different things that we know about parabolas. You've got two main forms. Standard form is the one you're probably more comfortable with. AX squared plus BX plus C. And the other form, vertex form, looks like this. A times the quantity X minus H squared plus K. Most of us probably like the standard form better. We can find the vertex of this parabola using the formula negative B over 2A. And then you plug that in and get whatever you get. So the vertex could be found by negative B over 2A. Plug it in and get something. That's the vertex. But vertex form is nice because vertex form, you can see the vertex in the actual equation or expression. The vertex in this case is just H comma K. So that's why vertex form would be nice. Vertex form is nice because you can see what the vertex is immediately. Number one, example 1A, graph this thing, give the domain and the range. So I'm going to show you a couple of shortcuts maybe for graphing. Obviously, you could plug this in on Desmos. That would be the easiest thing to do, but you probably need to have some, uh, some techniques for doing it by hand as well. First thing I would do is find the vertex. So we're going to go, we're going to go negative B over 2A. In this problem, um, A is 1 and B is 4. So we'd have negative 4 over 2 times 1. Negative 4 over 2, that's negative 2. Okay, so that's, our, that's, that's the first part of a vertex. That's not the vertex. That's the x-coordinate of the vertex. I'm going to take that number and plug it in. So plug it into the expression. You've got negative 2 squared plus 4 times negative 2 minus 4. And if you can do that by hand, do it by hand. If you need to use a calculator, use a calculator, but by all means use parentheses. Okay. Um, let's see, we have negative, wait, what was it? Hang on. Negative 2, forgot my parentheses. Negative 2 squared plus 4 times negative 2 minus 4 gives me negative 8. All right, so when you plug that in, you get negative 8. Put those two things together. We know the vertex is at negative 2, negative 8. So graph the point, negative 2, negative 8. That's the vertex. So you should know that this is a parabola that opens up. Okay, we know it's a parabola that opens up. It's got a vertex at negative 2, negative 8. Now, here's where I'm going to show you a shortcut that's different than probably a lot of your, your teachers. A lot of teachers at this point would make you do an XY table. Okay, and so you would pick X numbers like negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2, and plug them in and see what you get. Or since our vertex is at negative 2, you might go negative 4, negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, and 0. You're picking five numbers, and you plug them in and see what you get, okay? I don't really like doing that. We can do that all day long if you want to. Um, I think I've got a better way for you, okay? Um, I like to use what I call the 1, 3, 5 pattern. Maybe you've used the 1, 3, 5 pattern before, but all parabolas, all quadratics have this pattern in them somehow. OK, and so how it works is you're going to take this number in the front of the of the X squared and you're going to multiply it. So one times one, three, five is one, three, five. That's that's my pattern. OK, and so how this pattern is going to work is you're going to go to the vertex. OK, so put your pencil at the vertex, negative two, negative eight, and we're going to go up one and over one in both directions. And then we're going to go up three, one, two, three, and over one in both directions. And then we're going to go up five, one, two, three, four, five. And you could actually do seven now, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. 
Okay, and we're, we're taking advantage of the fact that parabola is symmetric, but it's one, three, five, seven, nine, eleven, so on, so on. And you can see the result um, is a pretty good looking parabola. So shoot a curve through. Try to make it look nice and complete. Use your space. Don't draw a little bitty short one, okay? Yes? Um, so what if it was two? Like, would you do two times one through five and then just do the same? Exactly right. If that was a two right there, you'd have to double the one, three, five pattern, and it would become a two, six, ten pattern. Okay. And so the result of that two is it's going to stretch your parabola and make it steeper. It would be a much steeper parabola. And a three and a four, you know, any number is going to multiply that. If it was a negative number, it would flip it. Okay? It's a very good question. Another question? How do you know every time that's, like, one zigzag? It's just, like, well, it's Yes, and, and here's, here's where the one, three, five comes from. Okay? We're talking about squares here. A quadratic is, is x squared at its, its purest form. So if you look at zero squared, you get zero. And one squared is one. And two squared is four. And three squared is nine. And four squared is 16, right? Okay, I could go on as far as I need to. But notice the pattern that emerges in this quadratic. From this number to this number is plus one. And if you go to the next number, that's plus three. And to the next number is 5, and the next number is 7, and the next number is 9, and so on. The next number, next number, next number. There's this pattern that is going to emerge here, okay? Now, like our question a second ago, if you throw a 2 on there, it's going to double everything. Everything's going to get doubled. Or if it's a 3, it would get tripled, and so on and so on. So I kind of take advantage of this, this fact that an x squared is going to have that pattern do you have to graph it this way? No, you don't have to graph it this way. If you don't understand what I'm doing, then go back to making a table or go to Desmos. Okay, there's lots of different ways to graph it, but I like that. I think it's the most efficient way to graph a parabola. Now, don't forget, we also have to give the domain and the range for this one. The domain and the range, remember, domain is if you squashed it onto the x-axis. If you squash that thing onto the x-axis, we're going to get all real numbers. Maybe you remember this from an earlier chapter. The range you're going to squash onto the y-axis, but notice it's not all real numbers because you're only going to go down to the negative 8 down here. Okay, The range is going to go from negative 8 to positive infinity. Maybe that's hard to see. Let's do a different color. From, oops, bracket. It's got to be a bracket negative 8 because you could equal negative 8. So bracket negative 8 up to positive infinity. Okay. Wait, what was the range starting? Oh, okay. <laughs>